Hi guys, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sonu sir. Uh, please note, we'll wait for like 10 minutes more as the participants are joining. So we'll start by 2.10. I repeat, we'll start the webinar by 2.10. So we'll wait for more uh, 5 to 10 minutes and we'll go ahead with the webinar. Thanks for your patience. Thank you.
Hi guys, those who have joined just now, please note uh, we are waiting for other participants to get in. So we will start the webinar by 2.10. Please note those who have joined just now that we will be starting the webinar by 2.10. Till then, thanks for your patience. Hello, Chaitali, are you there?
Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. I am starting. I'm starting. Okay. I think we can start. Yes. So good afternoon, guys, uh, and welcome you all to this emerging technology webinar on modernizing modernizing application with data and AWS migration. So Chaitali here, your host for this webinar. So talking about our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics Learning is India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class learning solution that can be fit in every requirement in every sector uh, across every industry around the globe. So our expensive uh, greenfield solution includes onboarding solution. We have reskilling solution. Then we have certification solution. Certification plus add on solution. Cloud adoption solution. Architecting solution. Practice playbook solution. Latest technology training solution. Emerging technology training solution and content development. So today's webinar is organized by ETC community that is emerging technology community. And sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies. So you just need to follow our meetup group. Which is an emerging technology community. As you can see. You can scan and just follow our community. Also, I will drop the link for it in the chat box later on. So you just need to install the meetup app for that on your device or on your phone and follow the community. So you will get the updates regarding the upcoming events, meetups and webinar we do. Then we have code of conduct. Please note that no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. For the recording, you just have to simply subscribe to our official YouTube channel. Again, the YouTube channel link will be provided to you all in the chat box. Then the agenda for this webinar. Uh, so we'll discuss various steps you need to perform for a successful migration. And we'll also introduce the right tool to use in each phase of migration. Then today's speaker for this webinar is Mr. Sonu Satyadas. He is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently working as a practice head in Synergetics. So he has 12 plus years of experience in training and development in various Microsoft and open source technologies. Then we have certification session. On Azure fundamental is in 900. So timings are 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. It will be on 31st of March. This is the open webinar on AZ 900. So registration form link will be provided to you all in the chat box. So you all can go and register yourself for that. Then do follow us on our social media platforms like LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. So you will get the update uh, updates on each and every webinar and workshop we do. So now I would like to thank you all for accepting me and patiently waiting. So I will hand over the mic to Sonu sir so he can go ahead with the webinar. Thank you all. Thank you, Chaitali. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Sonu Satyadas. Hope the screen is visible to all of you. Yeah, it is visible, sir. Okay. So today's uh, webinar is on modernizing applications and data with the AWS migration services. Today we will discuss the importance of migration to the cloud platforms, the various uh, steps 
we need to follow for conducting a successful migration. The various tools that is that are used to migrate your applications, servers, and data to AWS. In today's world, mostly we use the applications and services from the cloud. But if you see organizations who are in the industry for many years, they have their own uh, environment in their own organization setup. We simply call it, call it as on-premise data centers. They have servers, applications, databases running from this on-premise environment. So considering this on-premise solutions or on-premise environments, you will be able to provide services to your customers. But going forward, with the increasing number of customers, devices, and requirements, and the changes in the technologies, it will be difficult for us to manage the services, data, and applications in an on-premise environment. Because the world is changing in every minute. Technologies are keep changing. Requirements are keep updating or keep changing. So it is very important for us to migrate into a highly available scalable and consistent platform. We have to deploy our applications, servers and data to the cloud platforms. Because the cloud is an environment which provides highly available servers. You can easily scale your applications and data for millions of customers. You can securely manage the applications and services with less effort and management. You don't need to pay any infrastructure cost when you use the cloud services. You need to pay only for the services that you consume. So now the organizations are forced to migrate their applications and services from the on-premise environment to the cloud. There are different uh, reasons or there are different uh, migration drivers that force the organizations to migrate their applications and services from on-premise to cloud. Some of them are the agility or dev productivity. So considering the <clears throat> considering the application and database servers, when we look into the application servers agility to respond to the uh, errors or when the more number of requests comes from the users, giving a highly available environment is challenging in the on-premise environment. So it is very important us to look for a productive, highly available and scalable solution for deploying our data and applications. Organizations have data centers where you have large number of servers in which you need to uh, employ multiple administrators to manage this large number of servers. So we need to consolidate this 
servers and data as simple as possible as small as possible so we need to find out a solution where we can simply deploy our applications and services and i also i have discussed about the technologies are keep changing nowadays if you see mostly the open source cloud native applications are used by organizations and developers for building the modern applications the frameworks currently we see whether it is dotnet or java or some other open source technologies all are now cloud based or cloud focused the deployment architectures deployment patterns are also keep changing you can see now the applications are deployed in containerized formats or serverless application formats so implementing such uh, patterns and practices in an on premise environment is challenging but you can easily achieve this in the cloud and talking to uh, talking about the cost when you want to provision an environment in your on premise and your on premise data center you have to invest on the physical uh, infrastructure for setting up the servers storage network and so on and when the technology changes the requirement changes you may need to add or update your existing infrastructure sometimes for better scalability you need to add more servers or you need to upgrade your existing servers because of the uh, uh, new technology adoptions in that cases spending more and more on the infrastructure and management is very difficult but when you go for the cloud you don't need to spend anything directly on the infrastructure you need to pay only for the services that you consume and you will get all types of services and patterns in the cloud environment sometimes the acquisitions means if you are merging the organization suppose i have an uh, 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 office in uh, india and also we have uh, acquired some other organizations or other uh, companies in a different uh, location then managing the communication between or uh, connecting the data centers uh, in in different regions will be difficult for us so for this flexible patterns we can use cloud where wherever you want to deploy your application servers wherever you want to connect with the customers we can simply use the cloud which is globally accessible from anywhere and it is also difficult for us to provision high performance compute uh, for your workloads suppose if i want to uh, use some robotic or uh, scientific applications or ai or machine learning applications we require some high performance compute uh, instances in such scenarios it will be difficult for us to spend more money on infrastructure and setting up this in an on premise environment but you can easily provision high performance compute instances on the cloud without spending anything on the infrastructure so when we want to upgrade our organizations or we want to add more branches it will be difficult for us to set up the organizations 
organization's landscape for more number of customers or more number of users. So this also makes us to think about the cloud environment. So when we talk about the on-premise environment, there are different uh, points we can identify that force us to move to the cloud environment. But organizations are still struggling to implement the cloud because of many reasons. Sometimes the investment that they have already made on the physical infrastructure. So when you move into the cloud, it will be difficult for them to discard the uh, servers or they have already spent money on the licenses. So sometimes reusing these licenses in the cloud will be challenging. Some of the cloud providers may not support reusing the existing licenses in the cloud. Or you have already purchased servers, network devices, the land for setting up the data centers. And now suddenly moving to the cloud will make a huge loss on these investments. Another thing, whenever we move to the cloud, we have to uh, create an account or we have to spend some amount for move, migrating the applications and services to the cloud. So if we don't have a cloud expert, we have to hire the experts. We have to get technical assistance from the cloud service providers. We have to purchase subscriptions. We have to acquire some new licenses. So some upfront expenses may be there for migrating to the cloud. Not on the infrastructure, but it may be on the management and ad administration level. Skeptical stakeholders. So obviously different people will have different uh, thoughts and they have different uh, points whether to migrate to the cloud or not. So convincing all, all of them, all the stakeholders is very challenging. So they may talk about the security, they may talk about the latency, they may talk about the cost. So convincing all these customers or convincing all the stakeholders and moving to the cloud is very challenging. Sometimes the application interdependence is also uh, uh, block us to move to the cloud because applications may have dependencies with the on-premise resources. So for example, if we have applications and services that uh, authenticate with the on-premise Active Directory or they have some specific infrastructure required for running the applications. So when we migrate them to the cloud, it will be difficult for us to manage this interdependency between the applications, services and the infrastructure. And there will be a downtime while migrating the applications from on-premise to cloud. So obviously when moving the applications and data to the cloud, there can be a downtime which we cannot afford. So that can also be a point that uh, restrict the organizations to move to the cloud environment. And obviously, as I have mentioned, if we have to do a cloud migration, we must have some good expertise on the cloud technologies. So they 
maybe the cloud administrators or the architects who knows uh, better about the cloud services and patterns and who can build the cloud solutions for our organizations. So if you don't have such an expertise, then it will be difficult for us to migrate to the cloud environment. But if an organization decided to migrate to the cloud environment, we have to do some pre-processes before the migration and some post-processing after the migration. So we have to do the evaluations to understand what will be the cost benefits what will be the management effort for migrating the applications and services from on-premise to the cloud? This evaluation helps us to take a decision whether to move to the cloud or not. Because sometimes if we have some legacy applications and services, it will be challenging for us to migrate to the cloud because cloud is always focusing on the new technologies and practices. So moving a legacy application or a service to the cloud may create more complexities. So it will be challenging for the organizations to adopt the cloud services. So doing the evaluation help us to identify whether this cloud migration is possible or not. Suppose if you have identified the benefits of cloud migration and you have decided to go for the cloud, then you have to identify the applications, servers and data which needs to be migrated to the cloud. You have to discover the servers, identify the data solutions, and make a proper plan for the migration. So what kind of uh, cloud compute instances we have to use for running our applications and services? What kind of storage services we have to use for uh, uh, storing the uh, structured and unstructured data. What kind of database solutions are supported for uh, uh, our applications in the cloud? So all need to be evaluated and proper planning to be done before doing the actual migration. So sometimes during the evaluation and planning we will we can identify the applications may need some refactoring before migrating to the cloud because the applications that are currently running in the on-premise environment may have some uh, architectural changes required before moving them to the cloud sometimes we may need to containerize them or sometimes we may need to remove some dependencies with the on-premise services. So different uh, uh, migration strategies we have to uh, plan for moving our applications and data to cloud. And then identifying the right tools and services from the cloud to migrate your data and applications is also very important. Suppose if I have to migrate databases, you have to identify the right tools and services for migrating the databases. If I have to migrate my uh, servers, you have to identify the migration service that helps us to lift and shift the servers to the cloud. So you may find different uh, migration services in the cloud, but uh, they 
all of them may not provide similar features and functionality. So it is very important to understand which migration service need to be used for migrating your applications and servers. Once the migration is completed, you have to validate whether the services are running as expected in the cloud environment. And you can start serving the applications from the cloud environment. So in your organizations, you may have uh, uh, different uh, services, applications, and data which needs to be migrated to the cloud. When you go for a migration, you have to decide what kind of migration strategy to be used for migrating this applications and data to the cloud. So the current IT snapshot, if you see, you need to understand the assets, inventories, what kind of servers you have currently in your on-premise, what is the applications configurations currently in the on-premise, what kind of uh, technical knowledge we have uh, for running the applications in on-premise as well as in the cloud, what is the SLA parameters uh, that needs to be maintained. So while running on-premise, we may be having that SLA or OLA parameters maintained. So while moving the application, the data to the cloud, we also need to uh, uh, focus on the same SLA parameters. So once we identified the servers and data that needs to be migrated, we can use different tools provided by the cloud services to migrate them uh, into the cloud. Sometimes we need to choose different migration strategies for our applications and servers. Maybe some of the applications we have to retire. Some of the applications we have to leave in the organization's on-premise environment itself, which means we have to retain. Some of them we have to relocate or we have to re-host them in, into virtual machines. Some repurchasing may be required for some of the services. Replatforming and refactoring also helps us to migrate your applications to the cloud. So what is this seven R's? Refactor, replatform, repurchase, rehost, relocation, retain, and retire. We can discuss that in the de in the, that in detail. When we when the organizations decide for migration to the cloud environment, we need to think about different. Uh, points. The primary factor is cost uh, reduction. So how we can avoid the cost or how we can reduce the cost for licensing the hardware or the management or administration because you already have purchased some licenses. You already have some uh, infrastructure you already have hired some people uh, as administrators to work on the on-premise environment. So if I move to the cloud, can we reuse them to avoid the cost or to reduce the cost in the cloud? Second is risk reduction. Because while running the applications in the on-premise environment, there are some regulatory compliances. Because every type of application that you run, it may be your uh, healthcare applications or uh, financial applications or some, something else. 
so there are some standards and compliance need to be followed for each type of application so when you migrate this applications to the cloud are we able to follow the same standards and compliance business transformation that is another factor that decides the cloud migration like business expansion merger and acquisitions increased innovation and agility and reduced the time to market if you talk about the business expansion suppose if we have expanded our business to uh, different uh, regions different countries and managing all these uh, branches from a single location is very challenging but when we use the cloud how it will help us to manage the business in different regions or countries or if i do some merger or acquisitions how we can reuse or how we can uh, use the existing services of that organizations for building the solutions increased innovation and agility so if we have to build a new solution using the new uh, practices and platforms sometimes new frameworks new deployment patterns something to be followed so how the cloud will help us if we are not able to do anything with the cloud in these cases then there is no point of migrating to the cloud and organizations need to deploy the applications uh, as early as possible so that because uh, now the deployment time we have to reduce releasing the new versions of applications to the customers is very very important because in a uh, challenging industry you can see the competition is there in the every uh, uh, area where you see the organizations are uh, releasing applications in quicker times so they have to deploy this applications or they have to release this applications uh, in shorter period of time so how the cloud will help us to release this uh, applications uh, for their customers in shorter period of time that is also a factor that decides the cloud migration so when we are ready for or when we go for cloud migrations we need to do some quick assessments on various parameters it could be the application architecture assessment suppose if we have an existing application which may be a legacy application whether that is supported in the cloud or not if the existing applications are not supported in the cloud do we need to uh migrate this or we need to recreate this application using the new technologies or we need to avoid this cloud migration so that assessment need to be done on the application architecture security risk and compliance assessment is very important as i have mentioned when we move the applications to the cloud we need to evaluate whether it is still follows the standards and compliance because maybe in uh, some of the organizations uh, migrating the data to public cloud is not allowed or moving the data out of the organization boundary is not allowed in some cases or in such cases we cannot do a cloud migration so we have to assess the security compliance and risk 
so technical complexity is another important uh, thing we need to assess because if it is very complicated to migrate the applications and data to the uh, cloud then it will take long time or we need to avoid the cloud migrations so what is the complexity for migrating the existing applications and uh, services to the cloud need to be evaluated and business complexity scorecard so if we migrate the applications and services to the cloud what business benefits we get whether it will be challenging for us to manage or not so we do the assessment and according to this assessments we will either migrate our applications to the cloud or we will either retire those applications and services or we will retain them in the on premise environment itself so if we are doing means after we complete the assessment if we are ready for cloud migration we will forward to the cloud migration steps or else we will go for retain or retire of this applications and services now if you have decided for the cloud migration we need to evaluate what kind of migration strategy to be followed so if we have less time for migration means less than 6 months to migrate your applications then we have to go for the rehosting model means you can simply lift and shift your servers from the on premise to the cloud environment so there is no application changes or database changes to be done you can move the servers from on premise to the cloud as it is it may be uh, a physical servers to uh, cloud virtual machines migration or you will be moving the vsphere virtual machines uh, means the vmware virtual machines to the vmware on aws uh, environment suppose if we have more than 6 months time for migration then we have to identify whether the applications have a fixed deadline for delivery because we cannot spend more time on migrations and then delivering uh, delivering the new versions of the applications so if we have less time for that means if we have a uh, fixed de deadline for our application delivery then we have to go for rehosting only or even you can uh, go for replatform replatform means if we have a vmware servers or vsphere servers here in the on premise we can move them to the uh, vmware on aws servers suppose if we have no fixed deadline for the delivery then we have to go and check the size of available uh, investment is higher or lower suppose if we have small investments then you can go for the re platform otherwise we have to go for the next point that is application is having its end of life suppose if the application is going to expire or application's lifetime is going to expire soon then there is no point of uh, uh, deploying them in the uh, uh, saas solutions or pas solutions so you have to go with uh, the re platform or repurchase but if the application's uh, life is ended which we cannot run on the cloud then we have to recreate the applications so you have to go for refactoring or rearchitecting models which means if 
you have the if you have the time for rebuilding the application you can build the application as a cloud native application so that is refactoring or re-architecting so refactoring simply means you make some changes in the existing applications and then deploying the applications in the cloud environment so mostly we use the past services for deploying this uh, applications and services re-architecting means we have to rebuild the application using the new frameworks and technologies and then we can host them on the cloud environment so this diagram will help you to understand what kind of migration strategies are available so here after you discover what kind of workloads need to be migrated then we will determine whether the migration to be done or not so after your discovery you have to take a decision whether to retain or re retire retain means you will leave them in the on premise itself you are not going to migrate them to the cloud retire means it's the time to retire those applications and servers so you can uh, remove them from the on premise itself so because that applications and servers has no uh, life uh, after that so if you have decided to migrate to the cloud, you have to look whether they have to go for rehosting or relocation. So rehosting is very simple and straightforward mechanism, which uh, uh, you can in which you can move your existing virtual machines to the Amazon EC2 instances. So if you have uh, uh, physical servers or virtual machines. You can move this virtual machines images uh, to the cloud and runs on the Amazon EC2. So you have the applications and data which can be directly migrated to the EC2 instances. It's called lift and shift migrations, also called rehosting. In relocations, we are do going to do a hypervisor level lift and shift, which means in the on premise, we are using the vSphere, which then we can migrate to the VMware cloud on the AWS service. So, VMware cloud on AWS means you can provision the VMware cloud on the AWS with a number of virtual machines that uses VMware. You can migrate the on premise vSphere servers to the VMware cloud as it is. So it is a kind of lift and shift only. But here what you do is the hypervisor level, you are doing the lift and shift. When you optimize your cloud solutions, means when you move your applications from on-premise on to cloud, you can optimize and deploy them in the cloud. For that, you can choose re-platform or repurchase options. Re-platform means since we have uh, database servers in on-premise, for example, we have a Oracle database or a SQL database or MySQL database, we can migrate these databases to the cloud using some past services. For example, we can use Amazon RDS server for uh, Oracle or Amazon RDS for SQL Server instead of creating an EC2 instance for hosting the database server. So we can use the Amazon RDS PaaS service for deploying the database solutions. So here the management will be uh, less and you can easily migrate your services from on-premise to the cloud. So you know infrastructure resources to be created here repurchasing means you will be dropping the existing licenses and you will be uh, repurchasing something new on the cloud suppose if you have some services which we cannot migrate uh, or which we cannot reuse in the cloud so we can drop them 
and repurchase something new in the cloud environment. When you use such a SaaS solutions, the complete infrastructure and the application will be managed by the cloud provider. A uh, very simple example, suppose if you are using the uh, uh, Office 365 uh, in, in the Microsoft uh, uh, cloud. Suppose if on-premise, we will be using the Office applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, OneDrive and other sol solutions. When you migrate to the cloud, instead of using these on-premise applications and servers, because we cannot uh, migrate these applications to the cloud, so we can repurchase a new license for the Office 365. So that is an example of a repurchase. So uh, that is also a kind of migration that we can do for some of our applications and services. Refactoring and re-architecting means making a truly cloud native application, which means you are either refactoring your application. Refactoring means you have to make some changes in the architectural style or in the coding or in the deployment patterns to make this application run in the cloud environment. So uh, you may not need to go and create a brand new application, but you have to make some changes in the existing application to deploy them on the cloud environment. Then it becomes a cloud native application. For example, if you have a no SQL database used in your on-premise servers, for example, we are using MongoDB as a database server in the on-premise, but when I migrate to the cloud, we cannot go and use MongoDB on the AWS platform directly. So I want to use a high performance NoSQL database, which is DynamoDB. So yes, I can use MongoDB use with the help of document, uh, document DB API, but uh, for high performance and uh, uh, highly available and highly scalable database, I want to use the DynamoDB, which is another NoSQL database solution on the AWS. Such cases, we have to make some changes inside our application code. The entire database section we have to rewrite uh, for you for running in the uh, cloud with the DynamoDB. Then we can deploy the application to the cloud. Or sometimes we have to uh, rebuild the entire application because the existing application may be a monolithic application and I want to rebuild the application in the microservices format to run in the cloud platform because if I want to uh, deploy the applications on the Kubernetes clusters, if I have an EKS cluster, I can run my applications as containerized microservices, which is the new pattern for building and deploying applications. So my existing application is a monolithic application which I can rebuild in the form of microservices, then containerize it, and then rerun this, uh, uh, deploy these applications on the uh, cloud services such as uh, EKS. So this is what I have explained. So your application may be a monolithic application. So you can convert this application into a microservice. So sometimes you can uh, uh, do a re-hosting for this application. Suppose the monolithic application, as it is, you can move to the cloud or if it is running on a, a vSphere server you will be able to re-platform this to the cloud or you can rebuild the application with the help of microservices so convert this monolithic applications into microservices so microservices is a kind of 
application pattern that we can use to build cloud native applications. So we can easily migrate this existing applications either by re-hosting them or re-platform or by re-architecting them. If you talk about re-host, usually we run our applications, databases and services in our on-premise data center with the help of virtual machines. These virtual machines may be running on VMware or maybe a Hyper-V environment. But when we decide to migrate to the cloud, we can do a lift and shift migration, which means the applications and services which we have in our on-premise virtual machines or on-premise physical servers, as it is, we can migrate to the cloud. It means I don't need to go and make any changes in the application structure. No additional configurations required because in the on-premise, we are running them in virtual machines. In when, when we migrate them into the cloud, still we are going to run these applications and servers in the virtual machines. But one thing we have to consider, the high availability, scalability, load balancing, security, disaster recovery and backup all needs to be configured by the administrator. So as a cloud user or cloud administrator, you are responsible for the high availability of these virtual machines. You are responsible for the scaling of these virtual machines. So while doing a re-hosting or lift and shift migrations, identifying the right VM instances is very important because if you have a virtual machine that runs the database, when you decide to migrate this database server to the cloud, you need to consider an VM instance type, that means EC2 instance type, that provides the same capacity, which means the same CPU, RAM, and the IOPS for performing this database operations. So without any proper planning, if you are simply migrating the uh, databases to a server may uh, affect the performance of the databases in the cloud environment. So you will say that, okay, yes, I have done the migration to the cloud, but after migration, the database performance goes very low. It may be because you have selected a wrong VM instance type. So if you consider the benefits of Rehosting usually the fastest uh, migration strategy because it's very easy to lift and shift the migrate uh, virtual machines from on premise to the cloud. There are no architectural modifications required in your applications. But the disadvantages is miss most cloud cloudy benefits of target platform, both technical and financial, because since uh, you are not making any changes in the application architecture. It cannot uh, uh, utilize the cloud features. Like if I want to use uh, the uh, communication patterns or the deployment patterns, or maybe I have to use the uh, high availability solutions for the applications okay, or uh, the managed backups. So you will not get these benefits by default when you use re-hosting or lift and shift migrations. You may need to explicitly configure all these functionalities. For re-hosting, if you consider in the on-premise data center, we have multiple 
uh, servers for web application, databases, and storage. So we need to choose the appropriate VM instances in the uh, AWS cloud. So you have variety of uh, processes available. AWS, Intel, or AMD processors. Then fast processors available, you can choose uh, uh, the, the CPUs that supports the CPU clock's speed that matches your on-premise. Then high memory footprint, you can choose an appropriate VM instance that support the uh, in-memory. Storage, it may be a standard uh, HDD storage, or you can even go for SSD storage types. Networking, you can go up to 100 Gbps network speed. So you, ca you can even choose the bare metal infrastructure provided by the cloud services. So there are different uh, instance types, the pre-created instance types available starting from the nano instance type to 32x large instance types. So you can go and choose any of the instance types that provide the sufficient compute capacity for your applications and data. When we consider the read platforming, we will be using the managed virtual machines, container deployments, managed databases, or managed file servers. So considering the managed virtual machines, it could be a Linux or Windows virtual machines, which is uh, managed by the cloud service provider. For example, Elastic Beanstack. Elastic Beanstack help you to deploy the web applications on the cloud environment. So you don't need to go and create any virtual machines explicitly. When you create an Elastic Beanstack, it creates an environment in the backend, which means it creates a virtual machine instance in the back backend. And uh, you are required only to uh, deploy the applications. So you don't need to manage the infrastructure for hosting these applications. Similarly, when you deploy the applications in the form of containers, for example, if you are using uh, AWS ECS or EKS kind of services, you can simply deploy the containers without managing the virtual machines required for creating the clusters, like for ECS clusters or EKS clusters. You don't need to worry about creating these uh, in virtual machines for your clusters. You can simply containerize and deploy the applications in a EKS or ECS cluster. Managed databases simply means the PaaS database solutions like uh, Amazon RDS or DynamoDB or DocumentDB. So if you are looking for relational databases uh, such as SQL Server, MySQL, PostgreSQL, or uh, Oracle, then you can go for the uh, AWS RDS service uh, in which you don't need to create any database servers explicitly. The underlying virtual machines will be automatically created and managed by the cloud service provider. You can even go for managed file servers like uh, EBS storages or EFS, uh, Elastic File Share, or Elastic Block Storage, you can use to store the data. You can migrate your data from on-premise storage solutions to these managed file services. The benefits of using replatforming is uh, realize some of the benefits of the cloud platform because primary benefit that we can identify is no additional management of infrastructure uh, or virtual machines required. So you 
are going to simply create a service which by default creates the uh, virtual machines behind the scene and you are only required to deploy the applications you are only required to deploy the applications and services to the uh, services that you have created in the cloud minimal architectural modifications you may need to do in your applications but uh, disadvantages if you consider can be some rework required so that is uh, uh, one benefit we have told there are some architectural changes required compared to the lift and shift rehosting migration but here since we are converting the applications into uh, a containerized application so we may need to containerize and deploy or if we are deploying the applications into managed pass services we have to go and make some changes to that is support in the managed platform so here you can see an example we have uh, on premise uh, load balancers which you can replace with the application load balancer or network load balancer uh, in the cloud which provides high availability automatic scaling and the security or you can uh, use elastic bean stack so in elastic bean stack you are only required to deploy the application code the underlying servers like uh, uh, the http web server the physical infrastructure creating the uh, ec2 instances all will be taken care by the cloud so you as a user needs to create an instance of elastic bean service that automatically creates a vm for you and you are requested to deploy only the application code when it comes to database you can see uh, instead of using the database servers in on premise we can migrate them to the managed databases for example we can use an rds instance so rds for sql server rds for oracle or rds for mysql or postgresql can be used for migrating your data so if you consider in the on premise we have to explicitly create and configure the load balancers we have to create and configure the application servers we have to create and configure the database servers but when it comes to cloud we we can use the uh, load balancers means cloud load balancers we can use the elastic bean stack kind of services that allows us to deploy the applications without worrying about the infrastructure and we can also use the rds services which uh, does not requires any kind of infrastructure management you can simply deploy your uh, applications sorry your data on the rds instances so when you go for uh, uh, rds instances compared to the ec2 as you can see if we are explicitly creating the ec2 instances for your databases it is your responsibility for o doing the os patching database software installation database patching configuring the database backup high availability and scalability but when it comes to rds pass services all these uh, management tasks will be taken care by the aws when you consider the re platform option for the aws services here you can see in the on premise in the on premise we have the compute instances that means we have the physical servers 
or VM containers or on-premise Kubernetes service, when we migrate them to cloud, we can use the Elastic Beanstack or we can use the Fargate or we can use the EKS, which is the Elastic Kubernetes cluster. So uh, instead of the on-premise Kubernetes clusters, we can use the managed clusters, that is Elastic Kubernetes service. Or instead of managing the application servers, we can use the uh, Elastic Beanstack, which helps us to deploy our applications. Considering the databases, we may have on-premise servers for MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle SQL database and the MongoDB. But when it comes to uh, cloud, we can use the past services like uh, Amazon RDS for all the relational types, then Amazon Aurora, or we can use the document DB or Dynamo DB for no SQL data. For storage on premise, we will be using the uh, NFS or SMB servers. But when it comes, uh, goes to the cloud, we can use FSx storages or EFS volumes to store the data. For messaging infrastructure, we have to uh, configure or we have to create the active MQ Kafka servers or ESP enterprise service bus uh, servers explicitly. But in cloud, we don't need to go and create any messaging servers. We can use the Amazon MQ or MSK. Similarly, for analytics, we can use on-premise Hadoop clusters, Elasticsearch servers clusters. But in the cloud, we can use the EMR, which is uh, used for your Hadoop services and uh, Amazon Elasticsearch service, which is a managed service for Elasticsearch. Considering the re-architecting, which means you are planning to build a cloud native applications. So when you plan for a cloud native application, you will be building your applications in the form of microservices, which can be deployed in the form of containers or serverless applications. So containers and serverless applications are one of the popular uh, deployment patterns but the uh, challenge is here you have to rebuild the entire application in the microservices or serverless format but when you rebuild the application focusing on the cloud it can leverage all the features of the cloud services because it's a cloud native application. Here you can see, suppose if we have an existing infrastructure on the cloud itself, like uh, we have something like a, a, a re-platform service, like a, a load balancers, Elastic Beanstack for our applications, and the Amazon RDS for database, uh, EFS for the storage solutions. So this can be then easily replaced by the uh, serverless services. So you can use Lambda for deploying your applications. DynamoDB, which is a uh, key value pair database solution, which is a highly available and highly scalable database service. You can also use S3 buckets for the data storages. So you will be able to run your applications either in the form of serverless applications, that is AWS Lambda, or you are also able to run your application as a Kubernetes container. So you can, uh, sorry, not Kubernetes, uh, Docker containerized application. So you can see here, here the uh, Fargate is used 
Fargate is used as a container service. It's a serverless container service that helps you to run your containerized applications. So in the benefit is since you are running it as a container, no dependencies need to be installed in the host machine. And since you are using the Fargate for hosting these containers, there is no uh, VMs or EC2 instances need to be created prior. For messaging platforms, we can use some of the cloud services. Like if you are using uh, some queue services like uh, RabbitMQ in your applications, you, the uh, uh, alternate for that in the cloud is simple queue service, means the Amazon, Amazon SQS you can use uh, for implementing the queue services because it's very simple fully managed uh, uh, messaging service or message broker service that can store a large amount of uh, message uh, in it you can also use the amazon sns for publish subscribe patterns so inside your applications if you are planning to use any publish subscribe pattern communications then you can go for SNS, which is creating the SNS topics. So you can send your messages to the SNS topics and the subscribers can uh, consume the messages from these topics by using a subscription. So this, pat this uses the publish subscribe pattern. And you can use the Amazon CloudWatch events for uh, getting the updates about the application's health, uh, usage, and other information. The Amazon Event Bridge is again providing the event uh, notifications service on the AWS platform. So Event Bridge helps us to send the event notifications, which is real-time messaging systems, so that helps us to send the event notifications that can then triggered uh, that, that can then trigger a uh, AWS Lambda to execute the uh, task. So if you want to use a store and forward mechanism for your uh, messages, use the SQS, or if you want to use a real-time messaging. Uh, which it does not follow any store and forward pattern goes for, go for the event bridge so these are typical messaging platforms that we can use in your application because here why we are discussing because when you migrate your applications using re-architecting you will be actually building a cloud native application so the cloud native applications can leverage the cloud services for messaging and data stream operations. For data streaming, we can use Amazon Kinesis data streams for high volume of data ingestions. So suppose if you want to consume the data which is coming from the IoT devices or some sensors or some applications that generates very high volume of data, maybe millions of uh, data events generated by the applications. So such cases, to ingest such a high volume of data, you can use the Amazon Kinesis. You can also use Amazon DynamoDB as a data store for your microservices because it can store very large volume of data in a highly scalable mode. So any large volume of data that comes from the applications can be ingested into DynamoDB. So it's actually a key value pair data storage. So here, if you consider the re-architecting options, so in the left side, you can see the on-premise infrastructures for compute, database, storage, messaging, and analytics. And in the cloud, we have these options for uh, migrations. But if you are planning to 
use cloud native solutions, then we have some additional services. So these are some of the services that we can use for hosting this cloud native application. Like uh, you can use EKS for running the containers, but even it also possible to run your application with the help of Lambda. You can store the data with the help of uh, relational databases, but if you want to store the data in a uh, key value format with a highly scalable format or highly scalable data, then you can use the DynamoDB. So you can store the data with the help of FSx or EFS services. But if I want to make my data publicly accessible using the uh, HTTP URLs, so typically the uh, media files required for your application like a Facebook, YouTube kind of applications, the media files like images, videos and audios are are uh, coming from some of the storage containers. So such storage containers you can create in S3 buckets. You can also use some of the messaging patterns like uh, Amazon MQ, MSK and Amazon Kinesis uh, we can use along with the if you are looking for a uh, store and forward kind of uh, messaging pattern or publish and subscribe uh, messaging patterns, you can use the SQS or SNS uh, services. So SQS uses store and forward and uh, SNS supports publish subscribe patterns. So when you build the cloud native applications, you can make use of these services for better performance. Considering the cost savings. So when you look into the total cost of ownership comparison uh, for on-premise and the cloud, the on-premise servers cost will be higher and lift and shift migration servers cost will be comparatively lower than the on-premise cost because here, we have uh, benefits like uh, we are not spending on licenses, we are not spending on the infrastructure, and the instance resizing is supported, which means whenever you require higher in uh, means high uh, capacity instances, we can go for that. And whenever the demand decreases, you can move into a low capacity instances. And you can elastically uh, uh, run your applications. Suppose if more number of requests comes, you can provision more uh, instances of your servers uh, using the uh, uh, EC2 auto scale. You will be able to create scalable virtual machines. So when you uh, optimize the virtual machines on the cloud, you can reduce the cost of uh, uh, your cloud applications. But when you move into the managed servers or managed services like uh, containers and serverless services, you can even reduce the cost more with a true uh, cloud optimized manner. So if you use the EC2 instances, uh, a flexible scaling is not uh, possible, but when you go for a serverless or container based uh, uh, services, it is very easy for us to implement flexible scaling. So that will reduce the cost uh, uh, more compared to the EC2 instances. So if you here you can see the comparison uh, chart. So for on premise, it, the cost will be higher. And when you for a optimized uh, EC2 virtual machine, you can see the cost is comparatively low. And when you move to the serverless and managed services, then you can see it becomes a truly cloud optimized application. In such cases, the cost will be again reduced. So now, we have discussed uh, 
about the different the migration uh, technologies or migration practices, something like uh, re-hosting, uh, relocation, uh, re-platform, and re-architecting. Now we need to understand in the AWS what are the different services supports this migration. So we have also discussed what is migration, what are the different uh, parameters that uh, uh, enforces the migration, what are the different uh, pain points that we have. So if you are going for migration, what are the different uh, tools and services uh, that we can use in the AWS cloud platform for our database? Uh, server migrations and application migrations we can see in the coming slides. Also, we will discuss what are the different steps involved in the migration process and in each step, what are the different uh, uh, services we can use for completing a successful migration. So before going for that, we will take a small break of uh, 5 to 10 minutes and then we will continue the session. So if you have any queries or questions, you can uh, post those questions in the chat. Uh, we will discuss those questions uh, uh, post the session. Means after the session completes, we can talk about that uh, questions. So now we are taking a break of 10 minutes. It's 3.30 now. We'll continue the session after 10 minutes. That means exactly 3.40. We will continue the session.
Hello everyone, welcome back. Now we are continuing this session. So, so far we have discussed about the different uh, migration strategies. And now we'll discuss how we can do the migration to our AWS cloud and what are the different steps involved in this. In each step, what are the different uh, tools and services that helps us to complete this migration? Let's understand that. If you look into the mi migration process for AWS, it, it is a three phase migration process. Assess, mobilize, migrate, and modernize. As per the AWS documentation, they have uh, divided the migration process in three phases or three stages the assess, mobilize, and migrate and modernize. So these are not independent operations. I mean, uh, it is a continuation task. So you have to do the assessment followed by the planning, and then you will use the migration and modernization process. So it's an iterative process that we continue to migrate our applications and services to the cloud. If you look into the assess stage, we assess the organization's current readiness for operating in the cloud. Also, we have to verify the desired business outcomes and develop the business case for the migration. In this assess phase, we have to identify whether our application is ready for cloud migration. If we have multiple applications and servers, what are the different challenges for migrating them to the cloud? And which of the applications we can migrate to the cloud? Because uh, what are the challenges for migrating the applications and servers to the cloud? We have discussed in the initial slides, like uh, application dependencies, the skill and all and many factors are there so which of the applications and services we can migrate to the cloud that we have to assess first and we have the sufficient uh, expertise to help the migration process that also we need to identify and we also need to understand what will be the benefit uh, of this cloud migration because if i uh, move my applications to the cloud, uh, whether we'll get the management benefits or cost benefits or uh, uh, the uh, cloud services that we are using, th that we are leveraging, uh, that helps us to deploy the applications as quickly as possible or not. So all we have to evaluate at this stage. So we can use some of the services uh, at this stage. They are Migration Evaluator, AWS Migration Hub, and AWS Prescriptive Guidance. The Migration Evaluator help us to identify various applications and services, the cost uh, factors for our applications, the dependencies for migrating our applications and servers to the cloud, all can be identified with the migration evaluator. The AWS Migration Hub is, as the name indicates, it's a hub or it's a uh, uh, platform where you can find different tools and services for migrating and assessing, uh, for assessing and migrating our data and applications to the cloud. So it's a uh, place where you can find multiple tools and services, and you can, you, can, you can even track your migration process. 
uh, in the migration hub. The AWS prescriptive guidance is a set of uh, governance and guidelines that helps us to migrate our applications to the cloud. So what kind of applications we can migrate and what are the challenges that you may face and how to overcome these challenges. All these best practices will be given in this AWS prescriptive guidance. Once the assess is assess phase is completed, we will be continuing with the mobilize phase in which we will be creating a migration plan. And then we will refine our business case. We will address the gaps in the organization's readiness that were uncovered in the assess phase with a focus on building the baseline environment, which means we are preparing the landing zone for our migration. So there you will be creating a migration plan, which means you have to identify which of the workloads need to be uh, migrated first. So typically organizations choose a policy that migrate the low risk components first. Because uh, if we are migrating the main uh, applications and services, and if it goes wrong, it may affect the high availability and the customer experience. So it is better to do a POC with low risk components. Slowly you can migrate the higher components. So you can migrate the databases and the applications which are uh, very rarely used or infrequently used by the customers because they are low risk components. Once the migration is completed, then only we have to migrate the higher uh, high risk components. So we have to plan uh, this, what kind of migration to be used or what kind of migration strategy to be used and which of the components need to be migrated first and which of the components need to be migrated later. So that you can plan at this phase. Once the planning is completed, you will start the migration process. So during the planning phase, you also plan what will be the landing zone configuration for your uh, cloud environment. So in the cloud, what are the different services to be created? whether we have to do a lift and shift migration or a relocation or a refactoring or a re-architecting. So if we are planning to uh, migrate into past services, which past service component to be used? How we have to configure the security for the services in the cloud? These configuration or these planning will be done in the mobilize phase, that is in the planning phase. For this, we can use different services, which is uh, recommended by AWS. You can use the AWS application discovery service, migration partner solutions, AWS management and governance solutions. Migrate and modernize is the final phase in which we will do the actual migration of our applications, data, and servers. So we have to migrate these servers and data from on-premise to the cloud. For that, we have to create the target resources in the cloud. Sometimes the uh, migration services will automatically create these resources or in some cases we have to explicitly go and create this target services. Once the migration is completed, we have to validate the uh, migration, whether all the resources are successfully uh, migrated and they are running as expected in the cloud environment and whether it is ready to do a cutover 
migration. So when the migration is successfully completed, we can move the traffic from on-premise to the cloud. So currently your customers may be uh, requesting or customers may be accessing the applications and data from the on-premise. But if you have done the migration, then you are ready to move the uh, traffic from on-premise to the cloud. So for doing the actual migration and validation, what are the different services we can use? We can use application migration service, which is recommended for the server and application migrations. So there is a server migration service uh, available, but it is now replaced with the application migration service. You can migrate your databases using the database migration service. You can migrate the VMware cloud using VMware cloud on AWS. For data migrations, we can use AWS data sync or AWS transfer family or AWS snow family or the AWS storage gateway. So there are different services. <coughs> Sorry. So there are different services available for the application migration, database migration, and the uh, data migrations. In this, we can identify typically the assessment phase takes a month to identify the applications and their dependencies and their readiness to migration. So during this phase, you will be identifying the applications and dependencies and whether they are compatible to run in the cloud and they are ready for migration or not. So you will get, prepare a report and then submit this report to the management which, uh, in which the team will be able to take a decision based on that, uh, what are the different components to be migrated and what kind of migration strategy to be used during the migration. And the planning phase takes a uh, four to six months. In this, you will be preparing the migration plan, identifying the components that needs to be migrated first, and then identify the components that need to be migrated later. Also prepare the landing zone in the cloud environment. You have to prepare the uh, environment in the cloud for uh, successful migration and connect the expertise for uh, completing the migration. Suppose if you need to connect to the uh, support team of the cloud service providers, you can connect with them to get the uh, guidance and best practices. You can also uh, Choose the migration plan as uh, uh, as part of this uh, migration planning. You need to decide what kind of migration to be a migration strategy to be used. Then configure the security and compliance uh, uh, readiness for your uh, uh, cloud environment. Once all these are ready, then you can start migrating your applications and servers. The typical migration process may take six months or more because uh, you may be evaluating the uh, migrated services initially because you will be uh, in migrating the low risk components to the cloud and then evaluating their usage, evaluating the risk uh, and validating those components, then you will start migrating the other components. So nobody is going to do a one-step migration. So slowly you will migrate from uh, on-premise to the cloud. So typically it takes six or more months to migrate all the components from on-premise to the cloud. So the steps involved in this may uh, uh, contain migrate, integrate, test, 
transform, monitor, and optimize. So you have to migrate some components, then do the testing, identify the uh, uh, challenges or identify the problems. Then you have to optimize those uh, deployments for running in the cloud environment. The tools that helps you to migrate is pr the primary service you can say is the AWS migration hub. It's a single location to track all the migration processes and uh, you can find different migration tools and services in the AWS migration hub. The different uh, migration services which is offered by AWS. You can see uh, the AWS application discovery service, AWS application migration service, AWS database migration service, AWS schema conversion tool, and VMware cloud on AWS. For data migrations, you can use AWS transfer family, AWS storage gateway, AWS Snowball and Snowmobile, and AWS Data Sync. And along with this, we also have other tools for inventory, business case planning, deep discovery and planning, then application dependency mapping, workload and data migrations, and validation. So these are some of the third-party components or third-party services available in the AWS marketplace. You will be able to uh, choose any one of this. Sometimes uh, Cloudamize or uh, Cloud Health or maybe uh, TSO Logic or ATA Motion. So different services are there for uh, inventory, business case or uh, dependency mapping and so on. So uh, choose a right tool to perform the particular task so that you will be able to uh, successfully complete the migration process. So during the migration or post the migration or before starting the migration, you will be able to use this tool. So choose the appropriate tool from the AWS marketplace. So now talking about the AWS migration hub, the migration hub provides a single location to track the progress of the application migrations across multiple AWS and partner solutions. So when we do the migration from on-premise to cloud, you go through different migration stages. So you will be able to track the complete migration process using migration hub. Using Migration Hub allows you to choose the AWS and the partner migration tools that best fit your needs while providing visibility into state, uh, status of migration across your portfolio of applications. So here, when you go for the stages like uh, discover, migrate, or track, it gives you the best tools that support the migration, discovery, planning, and the validation. Here you can see a simple uh, chart or diagram, a screenshot of your uh, migration. So here you can see the migration status. So you, you can see the server migrations process, uh, how many of them completed, how many of them are in process. All these you can track in the migration hub. The migration tools, if authorized, uh, they can send uh, the status updates automatically uh, and the results back to the migration hub so that uh, you will be able to see the status in the migration hub. So if the tools are authorized to connect to the uh, AWS, uh, then you it, it will be able to send the status information, the progress information to the migration hub and the migration hub will be able to show the status 
in the form of chart or graph or in the uh, dashboard. You can track the status and the key metrics on your application migrations by checking the migrations hub dashboard. So here uh, is another dashboard you can see. So how many servers have successfully migrated and uh, how many of them are currently going on all you can see the uh, in the migration dashboard. Now talking about some of the data, uh, some of the migration tools, starting with the database migrations. So the database migration service or simply DMS is a migration service that helps you to migrate your on-premise databases to the cloud databases. This is a very simple tool that you can start within 10 minutes. So simply select the source and target uh, database solutions, you can simply continue or complete the migration process. It uh, supports different uh, database engines, uh, including Oracle, SQL Server, Postgre, MySQL, and uh, some other. So you can select which is your source database and the uh, target database. And then you can uh, specify the migration, uh, the, the tables and the databases which needs to be migrated. So you will be able to specify uh, uh, which of the databases or which of the tables from the specific databases need to be migrated during the migration. So it uh, replicates the uh, databases to or from the AWS or within the AWS from that means from one AWS account to another AWS account you can migrate or from on-premise to AWS you can migrate or from AWS to on-premise you can migrate. So here you can use this tool for any kind of database migrations. So it is simply uh, requires a source database and a target database. The source database will be connected with a source endpoint and the target database will be selected with a target endpoint. And the replication instance is going to uh, read the uh, source data using the source endpoint, which is a uh, publicly accessible endpoint and then write this information to the target database using the target endpoints. So you can uh, keep your application running during the migration as well, means uh, when the migration is going on, you can still continue serving the customer request. So you have to just uh, start the replication instance connect to the source and target means you have to specify from where you want to uh, migrate the data to where that means so the source or target can be a aws uh, cloud you can specify the tables schemas or even databases means multiple databases or multiple tables within a single database you can select and then uh, start the migration in the database migration service will automatically create the target objects means in the target uh, database server the databases tables and schemas will be automatically created by the dms and then it move the data and synchronize this objects means from the on-premise it migrates all the data to the target service switch the applications when the migration is completed suppose if you have completed the migration successfully then you can uh, move the traffic from the source to the target because your target will be a cloud aws cloud database so you can uh, move all the customer traffic to the migrated instance
database migration options which is available you can load a table by table that means configure the number of tables that you want to parallelly move so one time load or change a data capture you can enable means just a one time migration you can enable or you can migrate the data uh, during this uh, application during the application is uh, alive so whenever the changes happens to the uh, database, it will update those changes later to the uh, target database. So it will read those uh, database changes from the log files and then apply those changes to the target. Filter criteria is available for selective loading, means select only few tables or subset of the data in the table. So if you want, you can select multiple tables or within the table itself only selected category of data you have to migrate that is also possible multiple sources and targets mix and match is supported that is one side of the migration must be in aws so either the source or target must be in aws so it can be aws to aws or on premise to aws or aws to uh, on premise so in uh, migration is supported in all ways but on premise to on premise migration is not supported so it uh, supports different types of uh, data sources like uh, from sql server you want to convert to postgresql or postgresql you want to convert to mysql so you can use the schema conversion tools for converting the schema and then do the migrations Ongoing replication support, that means you can keep your, uh, keep your replication going until your application is ready to cut over. Means when the migration is completed, then only you need to uh, move the traffic to the replicated instance. So till that, you can uh, continue, you can allow the application to continue uh, accessing the uh, source database. The schema conversion tool makes heterogeneous database migrations predictable by automatically converting the source database schema and a majority of the database code objects, including the views, stored procedures, and functions to a format compatible with the target database. As I have mentioned, if I want to convert my database, the PostgreSQL database to MySQL or MySQL to Oracle or Oracle to SQL Server, so you have to do a schema conversion. So this schema conversion tools helps you to do that. Feature the database migration assessment report for choosing the right target engine. Because when you do a data migration assessment, means during the assessment phase, you will identify which uh, is the right target database engine to be used. So can we, uh, do we need to use the uh, ec2 instance for database or we can we use an rds instance for database migration so which is the right target engine to be used that you can choose Aut automatic conversion for eligible database objects and code code browser to highlight places where the manual edits are required so in case if uh the schema conversion tool is unable to convert the uh, schema or the objects into uh, target format then it will highlight the areas where you have to go and do a manual edit so some places you need to explicitly go and provide some inputs for converting the schema for your databases so it will support the following conversions. That means uh, the source can be Oracle and the target can be Amazon, Aurora, MySQL, PostgreSQL or Oracle itself. And Oracle data warehouse is uh, possible to convert into Amazon Redshift. The Azure SQL can be converted into or can be migrated to Amazon, Aurora, MySQL or PostgreSQL. The Azure SQL server is possible to migrate to Amazon Aurora 
red shift mysql or postgresql the teradata ibm net netesa green a uh, green plum uh, hp vertica all can be converted into amazon redshift and so on so you can see the complete source and target mapping here so the uh, schema conversion tool will help you to convert from one source type to another coming to the application migration service so we have discussed about the database migration so how we can convert the schema and how we can perform the database migration so now coming to the application and server migrations the this is the primary service that we can use for the uh, server and application migrations so discover the on-premise server inventory and behavior to plan the cloud migrations so you will be able to discover the on-premise server inventory and identifies which of the servers need to be migrated to the cloud so it conducts an inventory discovery to accelerate the migration by gathering the server host names ip mac address and key resource allocation details so that identifies which of the servers need to be migrated to the cloud it map network communication patterns that means it examines the the examine the connections between applications and servers to uncover unknown servers better understand dependencies and establish move groups the application discovery service help us to identify the servers which needs to be migrated and this service also identifies or the maps the network communication patterns it mobilize for migration which means it gather the utilization data to create a right sized ec2 instances and the plan for migration in migration hub so when we plan for uh, application migration using the application migration service you this discovery service will collect the information about the existing on-premise instances and suggest which is the correct size uh, of EC2 instance to be used for migration. Because what is the, what is the compute capacity used in the on-premise, the correct compute capacity to be used in the cloud also. So the compute capacity is calculated uh, in on-premise and cloud is in different uh, units or different uh, formats. So uh, what is the right size EC2 instance will be suggested by this application discovery service. The two ways of performing discovery and collecting the data. So it uh, provides two types of uh, discoveries uh, process. One is agentless, another one is agent-based. So agentless means it deploys an ADS agentless collector. That means uh, you have to uh, create uh, an uh, VMware instance. That uh, that means you 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 have an OVA file through that you have to create an instance, and that instance will go and connect to other virtual machines in your uh, VM, VMware vCenter and gets the list of virtual machines and collect the uh, inventory but agent based means you have to deploy the uh, discovery service agent on each vm and physical server so in the agent based it is required to install the agent in each and every instance so that it will send the information about the current instance to the uh, uh, central hub in agent less you don't need to install anything in uh, the individual servers you just need to create an additional virtual machine uh, using the ovf file which is provided and then that will connect to the other instances in the vsphere v, uh, vmware vcenter and uh, collect the information about those servers 
here the discovery service uh, runs that we can use in the on premise do a discovery means there is a discovery agent that can be installed on virtual or physical servers or we can even use the agent less collection that means you have to deploy as a virtual appliance and connect to the infrastructure using the existing apis okay migration evaluation collector deploys an application and connect to your infrastructure infrastructures existing apis or you can upload existing servers configuration to uh, collect the information means if you already have a, a server configuration you can upload this uh, server configurations also to generate the report once this data is received either the agent based or agent less services it collects the data or you can manually update the report it will collect this data and send it to the uh, aws application discovery service in the cloud in the through the uh, uh, encrypted online channel and then it will be used by the aws migration hub to uh, start the migration so the aws migration service or sorry aws migration hub will be able to show the report of your discovery so it can uh, identify which of the servers are uh, now available for migration and which of the services uh, servers cannot be migrated and what are the changes need to be done in the uh, migrate uh, in the servers for uh, enabling them for migration so all that can be available from the reports which is generated by the application discovery uh, service. The application migration service is then used for migration. So the application migration service is the primary migration service for lift and shift migrations. Customers currently uh, using server migration service uh, are now encouraged to use the application migration service for the future migration. So currently, uh, there is a server migration service which is now uh, deprecating and they are recommended to uh, use the application migration service because the application migration service is the latest and new service that need to be used for all kinds of server migrations. So this will migrate application from physical infrastructure vmware vsphere uh, microsoft hyper v ec2 instances or vpc and other clouds to the aws so it means you can simply migrate the virtual machines from anywhere to the aws cloud so how this application migration service works you have to install an AWS MGN replication agent on the source servers. So you have to install an agent on the source servers, then view and define the replication settings in the AWS MGN console, means you have to register and configure. So how the migration need to be done, so that replication settings need to be configured in the console. And then MGN, uh, creates and manage a staging area subnet with the lightweight EC2 instances. So what it is going to do, it uh, creates a staging environment in the AWS region or in the AWS environment uh, with a low cost EC2 instances with the EBS volumes and then it will start migrating to that. So staging instances act as a replication server used to replicate data between the between your source servers and the aws which means the agents which is installed in the uh, source servers then connect to the staging environment and the staging virtual machines are then used as the agents for replicating your data and the applications replication servers receive the data from the agent and then write them to the EBS volumes. When you launch test, uh, when you launch test or cutover instances, AWS MGN converts source servers to boot and run natively on AWS. 
so that means whenever the migration is completed then it will attach the uh, uh, proper ec2 instances to run this migrated servers so for staging uh, during the staging it will be using a low cost ec2 instance to receive the data from the agents and then storing into the ebs volumes and once the migration is completed it will attach the high configuration ec2 instances to start the production ready uh, servers coming to the uh, final part of this session the data migration services available on aw so we have discussed the database migration services and the application migration services and finally this is talking about the data migration services if we have terabytes of data available in the on premise data center maybe organization will have uh, some gigabytes or terabytes of data uh, uh, in their data center so we have to move this large amount of data to the cloud so we suppose if we have to move the data to uh, s3 buckets or the uh, ebs volumes so then how we can move this data the one service that you can use is aws transfer family the aws transfer family offers fully managed support for the uh, file transfer over sftp that is ftp with ssh or ftps that is ftp with ssl or tls and the ftp and as2 directly into in and out to the aws storage services aws storage services means it can be your ebs or ef efs or s3 so you can uh, directly use any ftp client like a filezilla or uh, uh, some other uh, ftp client tool to uh, migrate your data from the on premise to the cloud you just need to create an aws transfer service in the uh, aws uh, aws cloud and then connect to the uh, target storage you you will be able to authenticate from your uh, uh, ftp client tool uh, using the endpoint created for the transfer family service so aws transfer service when you create it is going to create a endpoint and the uh, username password so you will be able to authenticate it uh, to connect to that uh, aws transfer service that then help us to uh, move the data to the uh, target storages like if you have an s3 bucket you can easily migrate uh, or easily move the data from the on premise storage servers to or ftp servers to the uh, s3 buckets so seamlessly migrate automate and monitor your files transfer workflows by maintaining existing client side configuration for authentication access and firewall so the benefit is you don't need to make any changes in your on premise configurations suppose usually uh, for file uh, transfer you may be using ftp so ftp port number will be open in your on premise environment you don't need to make any changes in that you will be using some of the ftp client tools such as filezilla or qt ftp or something like that you can use the same tools for migrating you can use the traditional authentication methods like a username password authentications so you will be connecting to the uh, sftp server uh, of the aws uh, transfer means when you create an aws transfer service it is going to create different uh, kind of transfer protocols like sftp or ftps or ftp so when you go for sftp or ftps it will allow you to connect from public internet uh, because the 
data transfer is over a security channel but ftp it will not allow you to deploy in uh, uh, allow you to connect from public internet you have to deploy that server in uh, vnet only so vnet endpoint is supported for communication so that means if you are connecting using ftp you have to use the vnet uh, endpoint for connecting to the uh, transfer service so aws transparently operates and manages all of the compute storage and other infrastructure necessary to maintain high availability and performance for your endpoint so you don't need to go and create an ftp server uh, in your aws environment this aws transfer automatically create the compute storage and other infrastructure necessary for the ftp server so you can simply authenticate with uh, that username password and the authentication endpoint that is your ftp endpoint uh, using the uh, same ftp client tool that is your qt ftp or filezilla or some other uh, tools then simply using the gui you can move the files from your uh, source to the target storage so the target storage can be a s3 bucket or it may be a, a ebs or efs volumes the another one is amazon uh, s3 or fsx file gateway if you see the amazon s3 file gateway enables you to store the file data as objects in the s3 cloud storage for data lakes backups and ml workloads so simply you can create an uh, uh, amazon s3 gateway that helps you to migrate your large amount of data from your on premise file servers to the uh, s3 buckets or the uh, what to say efs storages that means file storages fsx storages so amazon fsx gateway provides low latency on premise access to fully managed file shares in amazon fsx for windows file servers so uh, there are two types of file gateways supported by uh, amazon so amazon s3 file gateway and amazon fsx file gateway so s3 file gateway is simply used to migrate the data to s3 buckets and fsx file gateway provides uh, migration to the mountable file shares the aws snow family is another uh, service that we can use to migrate it is a purpose purpose built device uh, cost effectively move petabytes of data offline okay lease a snow device to move your data to the cloud so it's actually a device that you can uh, lease to transfer a high volume of data to the cloud means if you want to move petabytes of data to the cloud you can use this device field tested for most extreme conditions delivering high security and uh, uh, recordization into compute and storage compatible devices so this is completely rugged design for given for this it uh, it is tested in all the conditions so whether your data is safe inside this device uh, that is already tested in various conditions it comes in different variations like uh, AWS Snow Cone, AWS Snowball, and AWS Snow Mobile. The AWS Snow Cone is most compact and portable device, weighting in at 4.5 pounds, that is around 2.1 kg. Available with SSD or HDD options, so this is the uh, compact portable device. You can also use the AWS Snowball, which is available as a compute optimized device or a storage optimized device. All devices are suited for extreme conditions, tamper proof and highly secure. So you can move your high, high volume of data using Snowball also. It also comes with a 
compute optimized uh, environment or com compute optimized device or a storage optimized device. Uh, the other one which is available is AWS Snow Mobile. That is an uh, exabyte scale data migration service used to move extreme, extremely large amount of data to AWS. Migrate up to 100 petabytes in 45 foot long regularized shipping container. So it is using a large uh, shipping containers around 45 foot long regularized shipping containers are used to move the large amount of data data. So that means if you have if you have hundreds of petabyte of data, then you need to use the snow mobile, which is actually the shipping container uh, which is very long. The trucks container trucks you can see. So that is used to move the data from your data center to the uh, AWS regions. So that's the end of this session. So in this session, we have discussed the benefits of doing the cloud migration, the different uh, the challenges for doing the cloud mi migration. Uh, then we have discussed different uh, migration strategies. And then we have identified some of the cloud services uh, that are provided by AWS for completing this uh, migration process. The various steps of migration we have discussed in this uh, session. So this is the end of the session. Now, if you have any questions, you can post that questions in the chat window. I request uh, not to unmute yourself because if you if everyone start unmuting and start talking, it will be a uh, problem. So you can put your questions in the chat window. I'll be answering to that.